Welcome to the Asia Pacific Forum. This is the regional meeting as a preclude to the exciting World Social Forum that will take place in Mexico City between May 1st through 6th. It's exciting to discuss with you the UN 2030 agenda in Asia Pacific, local steps towards sustainable development goals to secure the global goals on the ground for the common good. Today, we'll be looking at the SDGs in the Mekong Delta, and we're fortunate to be able to have indigenous peoples from Kampuchea Krom to share with us their perspective of how they're working and more importantly, defending the important global goals and really using a human rights-based approach. We'll be looking in the SDGs at ending poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender justice, as well as clean water and sanitation, looking at the important issues of renewable energy, also looking at decent work and economic growth, innovation and infrastructure, as well as reducing inequalities. What's also important though is responsible consumption, which many indigenous peoples practice culturally, as well as looking at climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, strong institutions, and most importantly, the partnerships. And when we look at the Khmer Kampuchea Krom struggle for self-determination, we can see the systemic racism, as well as more importantly, the lack of really focusing on sustainable development for the Khmer Krom people due to discrimination based on their own identity. And this is unfortunately has been carried out for decades, but the Khmer Krom people are using the global goals to really build a movement that then can also be measured because what's most important about the global goals, first and foremost, is it's to really, most importantly, leave no one behind and furthest behind first. And that definitely is the case of the Khmer Krom people. And it's an honor to welcome Khmer Kampuchea Krom leadership to share what they're doing to achieve the 2030 agenda. Wa, handing over to you. Couldn't hear you. A little softer. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Uh, my name is Hua Shan. I represent, I'm the uh, Secretary General of the Khmer Kampuchea Krom Federation. Uh, the Khmer uh, Kampuchea Krom Federation is proud uh, to participate in this important event to present the progress and the step that uh, the KKF is taking. Uh, as well as the potentially implemented on the ground in Kampuchea Krom for the indigenous people of Khmer Krom. Uh, the KKF represents the indigenous Khmer Krom people in Kampuchea Krom of the Mekong Delta of Southern Vietnam. Uh, briefly, Kampuchea Krom is the Khmer name for the Mekong Delta and the region surrounding the Mekong River of the current state of Vietnam. The indigenous Khmer peoples of Kampuchea Krom are the Khmer Krom, the descendant of the people of Nukuo Phnom or Funan in the Chinese uh, translation empire. Under the colonization of France, Kampuchea Krom was called uh, Cochin China. Uh, Kampuchea Krom was transferred by France to the Vietnamese government under the King Bao Dai regime on June the 4th, 1949, without the consent of the Khmer Krom people. Since April 30th, 1975, Kampuchea Krom has been known as the, in the southern part of the uh, Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Uh, the KKF has taken steps to raise awareness and to educate the indigenous Khmer Krom people living in the Mekong Delta region about the UN 2030 agenda for sustainable development and its 17 sustainable development goals, SDG, to ensure that no one is left behind. Uh, the step taken including, but uh, not limited to, uh, A, conducted uh, seminars, be published and broadcasted on social media of the 17 goals in English and in Khmer. C, uh, dedicated a director to focus on the SDG. And D, 
maintain a dedicated web page to serve as a platform to uh, regularly educate Khmer Chrome about the SDG so that they can advocate for themselves in current day Vietnam. Uh, furthermore, we also invite all Khmer Crown people to submit and report any information to our page about the situation of the Khmer Crown people living in Mekong Delta region relating to any of the 17 SDG so that the KKF can help them. In Vietnam, the indigenous Khmer Crown people are being left behind as they are living among the poorer community and aware, and majority of them are unaware of the 17 SDG. Uh, the KKF has found that during the planning stages for the purpose of the UN 2030 agenda in Asia Pacific in general, and in Cambodia Club in particular, there are challenges and opportunities. Uh, why each and every goal of the 17 goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is important. We would like to point out that the five goals that we are concerned about and are vital for every Khmer Krom and must, and most if not all Khmer Krom involved in our view, will be left behind eight years from now if transparency and accountability of funding to every community, village, and town where Khmer Krom live and work are not available and inadequate. Those concerns on the five goals are number one, goal one regarding no poverty. As of today, millions of Khmer Krom people in the country Boy, you seem to get muddled. In crowded city and hour to leave, to leave their village in order to look for employment opportunity in an already crowded city. The COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated this property level. The Khmer Krom people are the poorest people in Mekong Delta. The gaps of living standard among the Vietnamese and the Khmer Krom people have not decreased. Khmer Krom remain, remain one of the most social economically disadvantaged group in the Mekong Delta. The main reason is that the Khmer Krom farmers do not, do not make much profit from farming rice. The challenge to exit, to exit the, 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 the extreme poverty and the vicious cycle in the generational poverty include a, almost all of the Khmer Krom are poor farmer. The Vietnamese government controlled the Khmer Krom farmland. Their lands have been confiscated by excessive force, leaving thousands of the Khmer Krom homeless and hunger. Farmers have been arrested and imprisoned for protesting against their land grabs. The lack, be the lack of proper agriculture training and no viable technology have resulted in low yields and poor crops. See COVID-19 pandemic and the climate change impact. And number two on goal number four regarding quality education. And we believe that due to the lack of quality education, it increased the high school dropouts and limit those at a higher education in college and university. B, there are millions of Krom people in Kamakia Krom, but not very few hold master degree or PhDs. Meanwhile, Vietnam has sent thousands of Vietnamese students to study abroad, especially in the United States, Canada, and Australia. But the Krom students, meanwhile, sending the, the, the Vietnamese student out, the Khmer Krom student do not receive this benefit. C, Khmer Krom student receive no benefit from scholarships that are generously offered by international government and organization due to the discrimination policy 
of the Vietnamese government. International effort outside Vietnam to support aircraft development of education are blocked because the government of Vietnam tied this effort to political motive. Number three on goal number eight regarding East work and economic growth, we believe that A, due to the lack of quality education and limited high school education impede the economic well-being and employment opportunity of the Khmer people. B, many Khmer workers have found that they don't have the necessary job skills or even some case know the Vietnamese language to compete with the Vietnamese. Thus, many Khmer workers can only find low-paying jobs and are afraid to lose them. Therefore, the Khmer workers are afraid to report about their working condition and mistreat by the employers. C. These workers are prohibited from forming their own labor unions under the International Labor Organization, ILO. And D, there are no affordable health care or clinic facility and hospital being provided to the background people at the local level. Number four, concern number four, on goal number 23 on the climate action. A, the livelihood and the sustainability of the million of Quagrom who live on the river based on the river natural resources at risk due to climate change. Rising temperature and change in the intensity of rainfall, river flow, flood, and drought are destroying home infrastructure crops and fishery. Me, as a result, vulnerable community of Macomb are faced with food shortages and diminished livelihood and see additionally predicted rise in sea level are said to increase salinity and flood in the Mekong Delta, causing damage to crop in the most productive area of the basin. Number five, we got a concern goal number 16 on the peace justice and strong institution. We have known that our, so our, our civil activists, freedom fighters, are being arrested just because wearing a T-shirt with logo of the Sustainable Development Goal, be the confiscation of Harry Kitty Party of U.S. International Covenant and Civil Political Rights, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and the Declaration of the Right of Indigenous People to Live is just another example and see the arresting and the imposition monetary fine on the civil rights activists. And therefore, we recommend that one, we urge the government of Vietnam to recognize Vietnam as indigenous people under the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, UN trips to implement and provide accountability of the 17th goal of UN SDG 2030, targeted locally where Vietnam are living and working. Three, as international agency and donor provide details of funding for each project at the local level by listing project number, project name, specific US dollar amount for its village, commune, district, and province where Macron live and work. Number four, target specific US dollar to educate Macron farmer and alternative to low price to grow rice and to build a greenhouse system. Five, have funding micro farmer in every commune, village, district, investing and applying a smart watering system, including desalination. Number six, educate and train, and train educate and train micro farmers of rice, fruit, and stream crop pro rotation, harvesting more than one time per year. We further believe that fund number seven, we recommend that number seven, fund and prioritize training of workers and supporting enterprises and Khmer Krom individual 
and youth who want to develop green agriculture. Recommendation number eight, allow Khmer Krom worker to form their own labor union under the International Labor Organization, ILO. And finally, number, number nine, provide scholarships to students of Khmer Krom descendant to study higher education in college and university in Cambodia Krom and abroad. Those are the, the issues and the recommendations that Khmer Krom believe that will benefit the Khmer Krom in Cambodia Krom. And thank you for your attention and then sharing the, the idea with us. Thank you. And that will conclude my remarks on this SDG. Thank you so much, Hua. I think what was most important is the way that you brought up and raised the situation of civil and political rights, that you can't really have the economic, social, cultural rights of a quality employment if you're not allowed to organize and demand labor rights. And of course, if you're already discriminated against just for being Khmer Krom, it's very difficult to have any remedy of recourse. I also think you brought up some great points about connection to the environment and those aspects there where the Khmer Krom are usually the closest to nature, but of course their views are not included in the public policy making and exclusion. And you also raised up the point, even when it came to education, number four, that Khmer Krom are desiring to be able to go to school, to be able to go to university, but that they're constantly discriminated against just due to their own identity. So thank you so much. It looks like we have Sarevut with us. Uh, it looks like he's in Ukraine, actually, at the, uh, on the forefront for freedom, uh, but uh, maybe he went to the Munich Security Conference. Uh, I'll hand it over to Sarevut if he wanted to share a bit about the SDG. Sarevut, how are you this evening? Sarevut, you are mute. I'm mute. They would unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my colleague, Mr. Seng Hu, cover almost all aspects of the SDG. Yeah. Um, there's something that happening uh, during the past uh, couple of months yeah, regarding the, uh, the human rights. So there's uh, the arrest of the uh, Khmer Krang who try to wear the SDG t-shirt. And this is a violation of the UN SDG. Yeah, the uh, t-shirt not just about SDG, but also about the International uh, uh, Women's Day. Yeah, and the uh, UN uh, Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People. So all of this relate to the SDG. And because of the uh, uh, pressure from the uh, civil society and the uh, international community, the Vietnamese you know, have no choice but to release our, our, our youth who, is, who were so brave to, to stand up uh, for their rights. Yeah. And we will continue to, uh, to dig out about the uh, SDG 17 goal that apply to the, uh, to the uh, uh, real situation uh, happening in the Mekong Delta. And, and I will add some more when uh, there's uh, some question about that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarebut. And that, of course, brings up really the most important part uh, of when the Khmer Krom are standing up to be stakeholders and partners with the state to make sure that the SDGs are achieved and no one's left behind, they're actually facing violations of SDG 16, of peace and justice and human rights, because the person was just wearing a shirt to encourage that there's, we can achieve the 2030 agenda. We know we only have eight more years, but the, then to see these cases that you shared with us today about being arrested points out that the government's moving in the wrong direction. It's not thinking of the Khmer Krom as partners, but as problems. And therefore it's important that we keep global pressure on to make sure that people's basic, people trying to become partners for the global goals don't have to become human rights defenders, but by really criminalizing 
the most basic actions of wearing a t-shirt that we have to all stand up together to make sure that all of the goals are achieved for everyone everywhere on earth. Moni, handing it to you. Okay, yeah, so I just uh, want to add on that, you know, um, now we have eight years left and especially in the last two years, it's almost like we all shut down and then the, the implement of SDG almost like, you know, wouldn't cost, right? Because uh, we couldn't do anything. And now we have eight years left and the situation of in Israel in Asia, uh, especially Asia and Pacific, I think it may getting worse because one, most of them don't have vaccinated yet, right? And that the, 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 the health in, in danger and out during the pandemic, we can see that it's, it's so really clear that the government have not really take care of the initial people on the ground. And uh, we can see when, when they're facing pandemic, uh, the amount of the government have is really little. And uh, at this point, um, the, the number of the people die in our homeland, come here ground, we don't even know yet. The government not publish it. And then um, we don't know how, how was the impact. We just know that, you know, at this point, let's talk about STD remover. Uh, we don't want, uh, we don't, we want like uh, no hunger or no poverty uh, by eight year left. And if the, the current situation of the Mekong in the Mekong Delta, we can see like so many poor and up to the point now, it is, we can see the people uh, like held back in online, you know, go to build a house for the, uh, for the people, for the poor people. And the government considering that it's just a, a charity and it's a work is done by uh, 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 people who, who, who has a good heart. It's not a responsibility of the government, right? So, I um, we we uh, we can see the situation right now is not uh, getting better after the pandemics, but it, it's getting worse, right? So, uh, we really concerned like uh, how how do we achieve SDG in the next eight year when the the people on the ground they don't even have a, a, a different fundamental rights and they cannot form their own uh, you know, a working group, make sure that the SDG is Im implemented, right? And then just the right awareness, they even got detained. So um, how, that's the question like for the world community, look at the country in Asia and see how they're going to achieve it if the, the, uh, the authority are still using, uh, you know, aggressive policy against the Indian people on the ground, especially the Khmer Gom in the Mekong Delta. So um, I think, as the, an activist on organization, you know, uh, supporting the people on the ground. I think we really working hard. We have a year left and just to uh, ensure no one left behind or no poverty. And to me, it's almost impossible at this point, right? But the government may see that champion again, just like Millennium Gold, they will be champion again. But uh, the poor is still there and the, the work like, you know, to help the poor people is living for uh, as like, it's not the role of the government to make sure that, you know, the poor people, um, you know, uh, have the, 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 the right to eat or uh, whatever the, the food on the, on the table. Uh, so this is the, the main concern that I, um, I don't know how uh, we're going to achieve the SDG when the current situation that's happening right now and, um, and when the people stand up for uh, for their land, uh, land right or things like that, the government considered as a terrorist, right? And we were, we saw on the news like many initial people stand up, and the government, the business consider them as terrorists <laughs> because because they stand up for their 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 farmland or their 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 homeland, their forest. So um, uh, I I just want to include that like you know uh, um, we need to work harder as uh, an activist. Uh, we need to look at how to ensure that the government is responsible for what they claim, right? Because if we don't have a, a way to, to, to measure it, uh, the government will keep saying they achieved the goal and the people on the ground still suffering. Thank you so much, Moni. I think it's an important point that we must understand that the governments around the globe must really engage with the civil society. And unfortunately, as we look in ASEAN, you know, this is an Asia Pacific forum. When we look in this region, it is really one of the weakest regions in regards to rule of law, in regards to sustainable development. 
Yet the sad part is that indigenous peoples, of course, have the knowledge to be able to actually achieve the global goals if the governments would actually just allow them to exercise their right of self-determination to be able to exert that. But you brought up another good point that indigenous peoples can't even self-identify as indigenous, let alone be able to make sure that their knowledge is incorporated into the public policy. So these are some of the issues that we do have to look at and continue to explore. We know this year, unfortunately, at the UN high level political forum, Vietnam is not volunteering to discuss their SDGs. So we will only be uh, participating there in a follow-up to see how the voluntary national review is being implemented and if there's been any gains in the last year. But one thing you did bring up that I think is important is the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child. There will be a review of the CRC and the CRC is quite important because it has indigenous people's rights. Article 17, 29 and 30 all specifically look at that. And of course the CRC is a great model for national policies and practices to make sure that the SDGs could actually be achieved. It's a, it's a strong framework for fundamental freedoms. So we can of course focus on the upcoming review of the Committee on the Rights of the Child in August of 2022. And it's important that we then see that as really the basis and the beginning to achieve the SDGs because it's beginning with the children, but then of course going throughout the entire country and for every generation. Yes, and, and we all know, right, Vietnam, one of the first country in Asia, you know, aside the uh, CS. So, uh, and then now Vietnam being review again. Uh, so this is the second time that we participate with the CSC. So, uh, and this is a good chance for us to bring it up, to let the world know, you know, that the children in Vietnam, that the Khmer Gom, all these people are not being, you know, uh, receiving the, the freedom of receiving the, the, the right to the language or the right to learn the old culture as the government uh, claim. So this is the, um, I hope, we hope that, you know, more initiative people in Vietnam get involved and to, to show that, you know, the, the current situation in Vietnam is not good as the government claimed in the report. Yeah, we, we, we are deeply concerned uh, regarding the, the lack of accountability and its instance, uh, transparency of the financial aid that the government of Vietnam received from nation donors and as well as the international organization uh, in the implementation of the UN uh, uh, 2030 SDG goal. And, and right now, not so much information regarding the implementation and how that money being spent at the local level to benefit the Khmer Chrome in Kambiki Chrome at the local level. So we, we are deeply concerned. We, we, we just want to make sure that any international organization or the nation donor that uh, provide Vietnam with the financial assistance be very specific and targeted no US dollar into the Khmer Krom, uh, commune, village, and county, and, and, and district where, where they live and work. That's the lack of information that, uh, that make us very, very concerned. Thank you, Hua. That's a really good point. That's really pointing out how we're all in this together. The goal of the UN SDGs is to make sure that we link the foreign aid with the domestic policies and that countries who are providing assistance definitely offer more and a greater percentage, but more importantly, that they link it with human rights. And we have begun to see that in some universal periodic reviews, as well as voluntary national reviews around the 17 global goals, that funds are going to make sure that these global goals are being met on the ground. So that's an excellent point. And we have to really work on whoever's donating the funds to make sure that they are making sure the funds get into the hands of the people who can then make the progressive policy changes. Thank you, yeah, that's true. Joshua, can I add a few more? Sure, Srebu, add yeah, one yeah. more point. Yeah. Um, uh, the United Nations should reconsider uh, how to grant the uh, the uh, observer status 
on the NGO to the uh, Khmer Krom organization. Because uh, if they don't do that, all the funding from the uh, international community just go to the Gongo, you know, government organized NGO. <coughs> and they just uh, rubber stamp at the government. And the uh, Khmer Krom who live in the Mekong Delta did not benefit at all. And uh, we try to apply uh, many times, but the uh, the UN, uh, the ECOSOC, was still reluctant to, to grant us that status, one thing. And uh, the other thing, the uh, international leader just finished their, their climate change uh, summit meeting in Scotland you know, in November. And they feel the impact of the, uh, you know, the rising of the sea level, especially when it uh, uh, flooded uh, Venice in, in Italy, because that, that the, uh, the central point that everybody know about Venice, Italy. But what happened in Venice, it happened in uh, Maldives Island, in the Indian Ocean, and also in the uh, South China Sea especially the lowest part of the uh, uh, Mekong Delta near the mouth of the uh, Mekong River. So in the long run, the sea water will swallow the cultivated land. And that is a, a big disaster. It's not just uh, the Khmer Krom, but since the Khmer Krom mostly live in the lower part of the uh, Delta, they will have to move up to the, the higher land and there will be a, a economic hardship and competition for the land available for cultivation. Beside that, the, uh, you know, beside the climate uh, action, the goal number 13, the goal number 14 and 15, life below water and life on land. This is happening uh, during the past, uh, you know, couple of decades because the Vietnamese government uh, encouraged probably all the, the farmers to uh, produce rice three times a year. So the using of the chemical fertilizer and the anti-insect uh, pesticide pollute the, uh, the, the fresh water. You can look at the rice field right now. There's no fish, no crab, no shrimp at all. That's it, the livelihood that the Khmer Krom, you know, used to, uh, for food. Right now, they have to buy from the market. And the pollute water, it's not just affect the, uh, the health of the uh, Khmer Krom farmers. But uh, when it flow to the uh, ocean and to the South China Sea, it destroy the, you know, the uh, natural habitat in, in the ocean, the shrimp, the fish, so this is a, a long-term impact that nobody pay attention. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Revut. You brought up two points that I think are important. I remember being there in Glasgow at the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference of Parties 26 session, and also partnering with Moni on a side event to raise these issues. Because a big issue, of course, that's raised is carbon capturing and carbon, of course, the best way is the trees and the forest, uh, but also taking care of the nature and not depleting it. And the Khmer Khan people are always working to make sure that they take care of, the, of nature and those resources. The other point I remember as well, as you're bringing up, it's the NGO committee that grants the economic and social council status. And of course, in that case, it's, it's not, the UN doing that, but it's the member states being led by allies of Vietnam to always, in many cases, uh, deny. And there's an exciting campaign being led now by International Service for Human Rights to put pressure because right now, once again, uh, just last month and this month, the NGO committee meetings are taking place. But of course, the government's that are really authoritarian, that are really showing more aggression, are denying any NGO that stands up for human rights a seat at the table. So both are really important. 
and also highlight the deficiencies that we have to overcome to make sure that we'll achieve the global goals on the ground. Anyone want to add anything? If not, we can wrap up, but I just want to make sure that everyone has time to discuss those 17 global goals, as well as connecting how the Khmer Kampuchea Confederation is active to make sure that these aren't just words on a sheet of paper, but more importantly, a way of life for the Khmer Krom people to achieve a better living that's rooted in dignity and equality for all. Well, yes, definitely, I yeah. I, I believe that uh, the, the, the KKF is doing everything possible uh, within our power as an NGO and a civil society uh, to train and educate Khmer Krom to know their rights and demand those uh, certain 17 goals of the SDG be beneficial to them. And those are more uh, a lot of more a lot of important points as I laid out in my in my presentation. Yeah, and in, in uh, I just want to add on like uh, as a, yeah, thank you, Joshua, very much. Right, you your own way like helping us out, uh, you know, training our people, uh, own way provide us a uh, uh, value info about SDG with the so help our youth back home or even though our people back home start learning about SDG. We've been actively since 2016 when we weren't, right, until now, um, um, the, the people in back home start about SDG because uh, outside, um, but unfortunately when they, uh, you know, looking for uh, doing more work, uh, demanding their rights just to know about SDG, they face uh, detention. And this is the thing like, you know, we, uh, we should proud about our work, like we, we do whatever we could, like who was that, right, from outside as an NGO, as a civil society, but the impact of this work, we can see that the people back home, they really start understanding and they really uh, look into how to uh, ensure that, you know, they're not left behind only like eight years left. So this is, the, we have more work to do, uh, but like uh, hopefully um, in the next uh, couple more years, we have to try our best and then uh, the, we will uh, do whatever we could to ensure that, you know, the, uh, the List our people back home can participate and they will not. Yeah. Thank you, Moni. And of course, while we do use the global instruments, that's quite important to use the high level political forum, to use the Human Rights Council, specifically the Universal Periodic Review. Just last week, uh, we also had a meeting with the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and met with them on their Friday or Thursday to discuss their most recent. Vietnam Australia Human Rights Dialogue. And of course, they'll be doing that again during the months of, of August. So it's important for us to continue the conversation and to pick specific examples of what should be done by the government and have measurable actions that it's not just that the mood seems good, but that we can give specific examples of how we're achieving human rights and more importantly, the UN Sustainable Development Goals within this eight-year timeline. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that's good. Thank you so much, Moni. Thank you so much, Sarevo, and thank you so much thank for joining us here at the Asia Pacific Forum. We look forward to, of course, participation, even though it's during the same time as the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, to meet as well at the World Social Forum in Mexico. And in conclusion, it reminds me also, Moni, of one of our annual UN Charter We the People's events when we hosted that yeah. with the US Social Forum in San Jose and we we're able to then share and discuss what's going on with the Khmer Krum. So this is a long continuation we have of participating in the World Social Forum series. Uh, before we've been at the national level with the US Social Forum, now this is the regional one and then of course, will be able to participate as well at the World Social Forum later on this year in May. Right. Thank right. you. Okay, Aloha, thank, thank you. you so yeah. much. Okay. Akun, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.